Hey everybody out there in the interwebs of the world, I am Robbie Rapole. You may recognize me from Ink Master and YouTube of uh, Inked Mag videos and things, but uh, I am here with my buddy Chad, and uh, or the Chad, <laughs> um, and uh, we're, we're doing a, a couple of podcast segments called Rad Thinks. Uh, this first one is about mental health and OCD and things like that. Um, so this is more of a trigger warning to let you guys know. Uh, some of the things we talk about are pretty deep and some of it's scary stuff. So you may want to not watch uh, if OCD um, or... Uh, so some of the triggers here are like OCD, anxiety, depression. Um, one of the resources we're offering is iocdf.com. Uh, and that is a resource for uh, OCD in, in Florida, is it? Uh, international. Okay, the so that is a, that's a resource for international uh, OCD help. Uh, and that's a great place to get a lot of these resources for OCD help. So yeah, um, but yeah, OCD, anxiety, just overall mental wellness, depression. So if that stuff is uh, going to hurt your overall well-being, diving deep into it, please. Uh, be warned prior to watching this. Otherwise, please enjoy. Uh, give us some feedback if you like. Leave us some comments below. Hit the subscribe button. And thank you very much for being here. Uh, hope you enjoy. How do you want to be uh, announced as? Well, I can announce myself. If you want. Cool. Cool. So you want to do it pretty simple, like maybe like. I'm Robert Paul. I suck yeah. a lot of dicks. <laughs> I'm Chad. I do not suck as many dicks. <laughs> I'm Robert Rapole, and we're here in Red Ink, Florida, my tattoo studio. And uh, this is my compatriot. I'm Chad Talley, uh, unrelated, but I'm the founder of Space Coast Paranormal Society. And uh, we're here to do some tattoos and talk about some stuff. So, actually, the first thing I wanted to ask you was, so it says Papa Partner Number One, mm -hmm. and it's a uh, it's a Pap's Blue Ribbon. I'll put I'll put a picture in there. You can actually see it better. Um, it was his favorite beer, and he's he numbered all of us. All me and my, my siblings and cousins and stuff, ah. so that he didn't have to remember names. <laughs> I was partner number one, my cousin's partner number two. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> 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 That's sick. So then your cousin that got the same one? But my brother actually, oh, brother. my little brother, he's partner number five. So it was partner number one and partner number five? Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> That's super cool. Like he, he was a he was a fun guy. I contemplated getting a uh, a card or like a deck of cards mm -hmm. instead, because one of the things we used to do a lot is uh, build card houses, okay. cards, crazy eights and stuff. We actually built one of the card houses that stretched across the entire living room one time. And so like. How many tiers of card house would you guys build? I think we all never got to like two story card houses. And then you would just spin them along, huh? Yep. Me and my dad, uh, who also recently passed, well more recently than, than your granddad, um, we used to build uh, coaster houses. Specifically, I remember doing this at Outback Steakhouse with mm -hmm. him. And we were fucking, you know, we'd take their coasters and build them as tall as we could. That was always lots of fun. So yeah, I can imagine like building that across the, the living room would be a time. <laughs> yeah, that's like one of my clearest memories from when I was younger around them. Yeah. I spent a lot of time at their house. Where was that? It was uh, right here in Melbourne. Oh, okay. Because my, my mom and my dad were divorced and I spent a lot of time at my... My dad's parents' house. Okay. So what was that like? Growing up as a kid with divorced parents. Growing up as a kid with divorced parents who had PTSD and OCD. It was fun. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> I bet. It was a blast. So where did the PTSD come from when you were younger? I, I had I had multiple sinus surgeries, four sinus surgeries. Okay. Uh, one of them I woke up during. Oh, sh and one of them I woke up throwing up blood for hours. Ooh. So per the paper that I found, the PTSD came up from waking up during a surgery. And so does that still affect you today? You know, I, I don't know to what effect it probably still has on me, but it just probably still Just kind of still, does. still just a, one of the yeah. things in the mix of like, I why we're f***ed up. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I have an episode, I, I just, I automatically go, it's the OCD, because yeah, right. it covers so much. Like, I, specifically, I suffer from harm OCD and health OCD, and now with the new house, house OCD. So, all right, you weren't talking about house OCD when we came over the other night. No. But that was, it was ha had you been experiencing it? Yeah. Really? It, it just exacerbates everything else. But the house OCD, uh, that's probably not like a real subset, but in my head that's what I named it. Right, 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 sure. It's, I'll find one thing wrong and then I'll obsess over that thing, even though it's probably a, a small, tiny issue. Like you but, need to like change the faucet knob in yeah. the guest bathroom that never gets used or something. Yeah, yeah. Like there, there's a small leak, like a pinhole leak in the P uh, what the hell is that called? The P drain. It's like the drain that comes down and up before it goes into the wall. Mm -hmm. and in my head that's a huge issue. In reality I just need to put like, a little bowl under there because it leaks so <laughs> slow. But in my head, like I'm down there I'm trying to tinker with it un unscrewing things, screwing things back in trying to fix it. Just making it worse. Yeah, I feel that. And like we had a small leak in one of the garage walls so they didn't tell us about. Because they built our house in a really dumb way. There, It's a stucco wood frame house and a cedar board runs along the front of it. Okay. And you would think they do all stucco and then put the cedar board as like cosmetic. No, it goes stucco, cedar board, stucco, up. So really? We, and they did the roof weird so it's not gutters, it's a drip edge so it's supposed to come down and out away from the wall and they put it so tight it was going down and on the wall and just sitting on that cedar board and it rotted out the cedar board so I can already hear like how detailed you're yeah. getting in your description yeah. like, like I cut it's the, working you up <laughs> I cut the wall open <laughs> no shit. we cut the wall open but was that necessary yeah to, okay, to fix cool. it but I mean at the time it, it drove you nuts it, yeah like, in Megan's perspective, it probably wasn't necessary at the time. You know, um, so Donna is uh, going through that with decorating. Yeah. I'm like, look, man, we're trying to get moved in. We really don't need Halloween decorations right now. <laughs> like, and she's all about, but it's all year round. I'm like, that's great, man. But, like, can we just, like, get the stuff that was here out, move our stuff in, yeah. you know, so I can, I can imagine from Megan's perspective, like, I love you, I'm supporting you, but we really don't need to be doing yeah. this, friend. <laughs> like every little bump in the wall, every little sound in my head is something bad. Oh, man. I feel you. And I mean, it, it's probably just me deferring any of my other OCD into something else to avoid the other OCD and just subconsciously. Just a whole bunch of avoidance behaviors yeah. just because that's who we are. Because with OCD, you have the intrusive thought mm -hmm. and then you have the compulsion to get rid of the intrusive thought. <laughs> okay. Like with me, it was it's checking things. Like I have to check the front door three times, three sets of three to make sure it's shut. Same with really? the back door. Okay. See now, this may be a different thing, but so Donna always at our old house would check the mail every time we left, every time we came back. Sunday, Saturday, didn't matter what day or what mm -hmm. week. It didn't matter if somebody else had said they checked it. We, we need to check that mail again. Do so. <laughs> I typically don't have um, that type of stuff that I obsess over. I obsess over really stupid shit and then I acknowledge I'm obsessing yeah. and then I'm like, alright, am I going to like really worry about this in a year? Is this really going to be an issue? You know, like, yeah. and then I try to assess that, but, you know, unless I'm in a nice rage fit. <laughs> like, the longest... OCD episode that I've had, which I told you about at dinner that one time, it was a last November, mm -hmm. when I was working the haunt, and by working the haunt, I worked in a haunted house, I was a scare actor, and I had the room to myself, and I think that's what made it worse, but I had an anxiety attack in the room, in the middle of the haunt, 
and I just I had to power through it because it was in the middle of the hunt. I'm not gonna. I'm the only person that can work that room, and I'm not gonna let him down saying, "Look, I have to leave." And I, I powered through it, but in my head the whole time I'm like, "Is this gonna be like that episode I had before, or that episode, or that episode, or that episode?" Right, right. And because of in there by myself in my head the entire time, like they had all snowballed into one big long episode. And then I had never had a kid before I had any of these episodes. Yeah, yeah. So with, with the harm OCD, with everybody has intrusive thoughts about like hurting somebody. But with OCD, it happens. Like I, I'd have the thought, what if you did this to, to somebody, or what if you did this to your kid? And most people are just in and out. It's just you have a filter. With me, the filter gets clogged, and you think you think about it. Like, what if you did that? But in your head, it's. What if you do it? 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 Which makes your anxiety go through the roof because you can't break the cycle, the loop in your head. Right, because it's just that constant yeah. song you don't want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. So I would have like TV shows in the background just to drown out whatever thoughts that I was having. And it got real bad. I was in an OCD support group already for my health OCD because I had a mole and it, it freaked me out. It's a mole that I'd had for like 10 years and never thought about. And then Megan one day said, you should probably get that checked. And then in my head, what if it's cancer? What if it's cancer? What if it's, cancer? <laughs> what if it's the worst thing it could yeah. possibly be yeah. immediately right, right off of with, with OCD, you constantly seek reassurance. You're not supposed to, but you constantly seek reassurance. So I would like bug the out of Megan and be like, what, are the, what if it is cancer? She says, probably not. What if it is though? No. Yeah. So I was going to a support group for that already. Because that scared me at that So point, once you got it cut off, though... It went, the, the, uh, that compulsion went away. Because the issue was gone. But with my OCD, it's transferred to something else. One thing goes away, another thing happens. Which is, like, life anyway, but, like, life on heavy for you. Yeah. That's, that's wild, man. So, like, as you sit here right now, where's your anxiety sit? Right now, it's not that high. I have other, like... It's easy to distract myself when I'm getting tattooed. <laughs> so, so tattooing is kind of a form of therapy for you? Yeah. See, John, the apprentice over here, uh, tattooed me the other night. It is not a form of therapy for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it also depends on where I'm getting tattooed. Like, my right. hand, not so much. My chest, that's not therapy. That's just pain. Right, right. <laughs> See, for me, I don't like tattoos. I don't like getting them done. They stink. I love the way they look. They get you chicks and stuff and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, like, I love tattoos. I think they look great, but they're so hard to have. Yeah. Like, they're so hard to get. You really earn them. But, like, I always... I have a, a definite, like, respect and admiration for people that come in here looking at this as, uh, you know... What's it called? Uh, I'm tattooing and talking. <laughs> <laughs> like, a, um, like a sort of therapy as a therapy thing you know cause like you know yeah. the suspension that was my pain therapy yeah but like I don't get down with this pain therapy I get down with that <laughs> you know like so it's just really weird and then now since I lost my leg suspending so it's like that's been odd but it's funny cause when I did suspend the last time I was like I don't really know if I need this anymore so it was like one of those things like yeah. it was a weird separation from that uh, and then you know broke my leg lost my leg and here we are yeah. but uh, yeah I went through a lot of stresses in the hospital God, dude one time I stood up I go to pee my pee is bright red orange oh. like fire it was really hard not to be like I'm dying I'm dying I'm dying because <laughs> that's all I was thinking I'm like dude and then I'm like I think that burned I think that I think it was hot when I peed, so I think something's yeah. really wrong. Like I think I'm radioactive right now, honestly, guys. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, dude. So like having OCD on top of that mm. would just like be. It it was it was a rough. This one was a rough one because it didn't it's didn't ever stop, but it slowed down to the point where it's bearable. So that that last episode you had never stopped. It got a lot better. Like, I, I actually sought help for my harm OCD because I went to my therapist that run, ran the uh, support group, and I was like, look, I, I think zero one of the support groups when I got back from Florida, 
mm-hmm. I, I, I broke down. And I was like, look, I, I can't handle it right now. This is what I'm thinking. Was, okay, well, we'll set up like a one-on-one session and then we'll, we'll work on it there. Because the key to overcoming OCD is you can't take medication. You can. It, medication didn't work for me. It made it worse. I mean, everybody responds to different medications differently. Absolutely. So, I mean, I could take something else and it worked, but I'm not going to risk that making it worse. So I do the exposure with response prevention, which is you do the thing that gives you the anxiety. It's kind of like immersion therapy. Yeah. You let the anxiety build, sit with it, and let it dissipate, and then do it again until your brain finally contemplates that, okay, this is normal. Like with my harm OCD, it was... He, he at first suggested, why don't you think the thought through and then let the anxiety happen. That didn't work for me because I knew I was thinking the thought to give myself the anxiety, like tickling yourself. It's not going to happen. Right, exactly, yeah. I had to put myself in situations where the anxiety would rise. Like, So you really needed that trigger. Like yeah. You couldn't trigger it on your own. I had to go and do things to trigger it and sit with the anxiety and <laughs> let it go away. Which sucks. <laughs> That sounds like the worst Sunday afternoon. It really you is. <laughs> I'm going to go do something that makes me want to shit myself and blow my brains out. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it, I'm helping. Yeah. But in the, but in the <laughs> end, it helped a lot. Like, right. It totally does. Yeah. And you know it will. But it it's just like, sucks. Do I really have to go to a beating right now? Like, yeah. <laughs> Like, okay, oh, I have I have a spare hour on my on my lunch, or I have a spare right. time, I have my downtime at work. Let me give myself anxiety. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man, that's f-ing wild. Like I do a lot of stuff like that. I call it more like comfort zone challenges. You know, mm-hmm. like where I'm just really uncomfortable doing something, so I do it. Hence video and stuff. You remember yeah. first time me and you did video together? I was terrified. Content was trash. <laughs> I couldn't even like. <laughs> put myself together because I was like there's a camera <laughs> you know and now like after years of doing it it's gotten natural because yeah. the only thing that's different is there's a camera like we're just having a conversation yeah you know but like it took years of feeling stupid <laughs> like feeling really stupid and like man so once again I can imagine the OCD is very very much worse if you know I don't have OCD and I'm having these you know paranoias about doing something yeah. and what what sucks with it too is it's triggered by random things too like I'll be fine and I won't have any OCD anxiety and then I'll watch a movie or something and I'll think a thought and it triggers the loop and then the loop just doesn't stop and it doesn't stop until I immerse myself in what's giving me anxiety Really? So, interesting. So when I wake up in the morning in an anger loop, and I'm trying to pick a fight with everything in my life, yeah. and like, just tear everything down, I'm like, why are you doing this, brain? Stop it! Uh, I'll hit my DMT pen. <laughs> For a similar effect, because that DMT trip on a pen, mm. it's not... It's not the same as when you smoke actual DMT. Mm. So, like, I can't ever really blast off. So I'm in this, like, real odd state of, like, tense, jaw-clenching, like, weird stuff going on. And, like, once I'm done with that, it's like, see, sissy? Life could be a lot worse. Yeah. And, like, I, I, dude, and I sit there and I look at this f-ing pen and I'm like, oh, this has got to be better than being angry. You know, and then like, it'll break my anger because, like, I'll put myself in something that sucks so bad. Yeah. It's like, what the f*** are you angry about? You know, which is interesting. Interesting, like, yeah. how similar, you know, dealing with OCD is to just dealing with everyday life. It's yeah. just... You've you got to immerse to, yourself in what makes, what makes you uncomfortable. And you have to, you have to acknowledge it. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, acknowledging your OCD is how hard was that? Like, you know, was that a difficult time diagnosing yourself? Like, I, I, finding diagnoses, figuring out yeah. what's wrong with me, so to speak? I've had Because I still don't know what's wrong with me. I've had it all <laughs> my life. Like, even when I was a little kid, I had it. Like, and you knew this? I had... Nobody had ever told me that this is, this is what it is. I found mm-hmm. out later on that it was... Because I'd have breakdowns in school. Really? With my, with my OCD and my, my PTSD, and I'd sit there and I'd just have break down emotionally and cry. 
And kids are cruel because they don't know what the hell's going on. Are, yeah. I don't know what's going on. And they're like, why are you crying, sissy? Yeah. Like, oh, no! Yeah. But, Man. yeah, like, I remember, you know, irrational fears. Like, one of my things when I was younger was I was obsessed with my eyes were going to go in the back of my head, so I constantly, like, checked the depth of my eyes and my skull with like, my, yeah. my finger. Or, like, what am I harmless? So you knew you yeah. had OCD. I knew something was wrong. didn't know what it was called. Yeah. Yeah, and you knew something was wrong. So what was the second one that I just interrupted you? Sorry. It was a harm OCD back then. Like, what if you do something to your sister? And constantly, and I'd constantly really? seek reassurance from my mom. Would I do something to her? But no, you didn't. You're fine. Really? So you would ask if you did something yeah. to her? Because that's the seeking reassurance with OCD. Oh, wow, man. But now, since then, I've, I've, I know what it is. I know how to control it. Like, right. I had had harm OCD flare-ups before. I didn't know what it was. I thought I was just going crazy. But I kept it in my head. I bottled it up. Well, yeah, because you can't run around saying yeah. these silly thoughts yeah. that, like, you can't say, you know? Yeah. And yeah. My, my thing to get rid of it back then was, instead of picturing somebody else, put myself in that thought. So instead of hurting somebody else, I'm hurting myself. Okay. It's easy. It's easier to think that and not have the guilt or the shame about thinking about hurting somebody else. Right. Than hurting yourself. Because then you and now at the same time, do you know you're not going to hurt yourself? Or you? Yeah, just, I I know that they're just thoughts. Nothing's so, going to happen. So you want it? So you just it's a trigger like a to flip it because I, I don't yeah. feel bad about thinking about hurting myself. That's wild. Which is a totally interesting thing. Yeah. And then you get you stuck don't in feel bad thinking about hurting yourself. You don't feel bad about hurting yourself. Yeah. Like, openly, I'll take it, but you yeah. make you feel bad about hurting other people. It's interesting, just, it's kind of a human nature thing. Yeah. You're not like, no, nah, I'll take it. I don't want to hurt y'all. And we talked about that during group therapy, too. It's, it's like, it's easier to insert yourself. You don't feel as bad hurting yourself as you would thinking about hurting somebody else. Well, sure, especially if it's your kid or your yeah. sister or your spouse or, you know, anything, like... And with harm OCD, you think of the bad thoughts about loved ones and people close to you. And most everybody does, but with everybody else, it just comes in and out of the brain. So this gets stuck on a loop. Yeah. And it gives you stupid anxiety and makes you hate yourself. Because people with OCD, where you get ashamed of the thoughts that you're thinking, you feel guilt over the thoughts that you're thinking, even though you're never going to do it, it's just a thought that pops yeah. into your head randomly. Yeah. Or you have the compulsions of like hiding knives or hiding things that you think you could use as a weapon or hiding bags. So like things to protect yourself for later. Yeah, like like if you think, what if I do something with that knife? So you'll go and you'll hide all the knives in your house so oh, you don't shit. see them and think the thought. And when in reality the, the exposure response prevention is to, to look at that knife, think the thought, but the and anxiety like, builds, no, yeah. and then just sit with it like, I know I'm not going to do it. I know this is the OCD. Let the anxiety build and go down and then you can you can look at the knife again without having the anxiety. Because that was one of my things when I was younger, too, was hiding hiding things that I would think about. Right. So now they're like, why are all the knives gone? And yeah. you're like... I didn't want to look at them. Man. Because I, <laughs> I, I would Like, what, them. kid? Yeah. I, like, I didn't want to yeah. look at them. It's, how did your family deal with that? You know, coming from... I can only imagine how exhausting it was for my mom, because I constantly suck, sought reassurance. And I would constantly tell on myself, too, when I was a kid, because the guilt. I always told on myself, too. That was, uh, that was something that, uh, you know, alleviate the guilt. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, I did it. I messed up. I'm done. But now, it's like, when I have the OCD build up, I will, I'll tell Megan, look, it's, it's building up. My anxiety is building up. And just saying it makes it kind of melt away a little bit. Acknowledging, like, cognitive behavioral therapy, acknowledging that it's the OCD, you know it's the OCD, saying it to somebody else kind of just melts it away. It's like venting your problems out. Yeah. Just, you know. Instead of bottling up like I used to. Well, dude, you know, I mean, bottling up anything makes you explode at some point. So, like, that's no bueno. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. Dude, so, like, okay, back in the day when you used to come into Ink Doctors and you were, like, mad quiet and, <laughs> and like, nervous, you were just a nervous kid, like, dealing I, with your anxieties and, and OCDs and shit. That, and I'm an introvert, too. I, I've worked on that a lot, but... You really have, yeah, because, man, I didn't know... We used to pick <laughs> on you because we didn't know what the... Like, yeah. he doesn't talk, he just sits. What, what do we do with him? <laughs> 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 and, 
And like, I mean, that wasn't definitely wasn't the way to handle it, you know. But we were all. But well, you young. didn't know. I didn't. I, I didn't, I didn't know. Yeah. Anything, yeah. Dude, it was wild. Like, yeah, and and so now, like, I, I totally, I'm, I'm stoked that we can have like regular conversations. <laughs> Like I didn't know the, the full scope of it. And yeah. After this whole mole, after that whole mole situation, I looked up um, OCD support groups and stuff. I found the International OCD Foundation, which is a resource for people. That they advocate for OCD. They advocate awareness. They have sources, resources for people going through stuff. Like, that's how I found my support group on their website. <coughs> awesome. That's around, dude. I've become a OC advocate through them. I did that photo shoot with Shannon, yep. which we can link in here too. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, that was cool because like, you you turned me on to that photo shoot, and then I got to do that. And that dude, the response I got from that, mm -hmm. from just posting on my social media alone, people were just like sharing their stuff. Yeah. You know, like it was it was really it was really brilliant to see what. What a photograph, you know, could do. So I was so I was so disappointed when I was we were up in Virginia. I was like, I really want to participate in this, but she let me. She ended up letting me take my own picture up there. My buddy it looked perfect. Yeah, my buddy Will up there. He he has a whole professional photo studio. Oh right. So we did it in his in his studio and sent it down here. It's like that. That helped me a lot because I got to express what I feel. Yeah, yeah. Like, the, behind my smile, I have the intrusive thoughts. I have the self-hate and constant doubt and anxiety. Man, that's so wild. But, I mean, at the same time, it's it's not that crazy to think, you know. I just I just don't think of you as, you know, intrusive thoughts. I think of you, man, Chad's so, so kind, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. But, you know, I mean, same thing. I Man, I'm an angry dude. I would like to beat most people up most days. Like, I have to work around that, dude. You know, and the same type of things, you know, cognitive behavioral stuff, like putting yourself in situations where, like, you won't allow yourself to be a prick. Yeah. You know, like, and then you're mad at yourself because you did that to yourself, but you can't be mad at yourself. You just have to shut the fuck up and deal with it. Yeah. Fun <laughs> stuff. Well, yeah, it's, it's something, and it's, you just got to learn to live with it. Yeah, man, and you know, I think, I think talking to you makes me realize that we're all in it to a certain degree, you know, in some sort of discomfort or frustration or, you know, shortcoming or difficulty, and it takes, it takes time, it takes acknowledgement, and the community helps, man, having people to talk to about it, and having people that understand, that's a huge thing. You keep talking about therapy and stuff, so like... What kind of therapies do you go to? Uh, you said group and stuff. I'm interested to hear this. <clears throat> well, I haven't found the group down here yet. When I came down here... So this was in Virginia? Yeah, this was in okay. Virginia. When I came down here, I had the intention of finding a location, finding a therapist, and setting up a support group. And maybe getting guest therapists to come and sit in and give their professional you know, opinion mm -hmm. on stuff. Because talking about it helps. Like Some of the support groups they do that have that's just fear-led... But you need to have one peer that's in charge. It's so, okay, it's time to move on to somebody else's right, issue. Right, right. But having a therapist there, they can actually give their input on you know, what they think is happening. Give you, because our therapist in Virginia, he gave us homework to do. Okay. Like for people that were, their, their compulsions were checking doors. It was like, okay, well, instead of checking the door three times, check it two times. And then work your way down to once and then none. Sit with the anxiety and, you know, work your compulsion down. Yeah. But I have the—I had every intention of setting up a support group down here. I had people willing to come to it, and then the pandemic hit. Okay, so it's not something that's dead and gone. No, once every once, it's more normalized to be now. around people and stuff. Yeah. yeah, then we can look at doing it again. So totally cool. Like right now, we just have that that group message thing that mm -hmm. I set up, but you know, how yeah, it's, it's, you know how it is with people in Messenger. You see it, right. and then you forget to reply. But, like, it's kind of cool. It's actually really cool seeing everyone in there, like, sharing their OCDs and sharing their problems and, like, having a place to really yeah. talk about it when they feel welcome, they feel safe, you know, they feel like, oh, well, even if they don't get it, they get it. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, I had a friend in the, she's in that group chat too. I'm not going to give any information away. Obviously. Absolutely. Because we both had the same, similar OCD experiences with house buying. They just bought a house and she was going through similar issues as me. So we'd go back and forth and be like, how are you today? You know, how's, how's your OCD with your house today? Right, right. So now, that OCD gets crippling at times, doesn't it? It does. Like in the last Just November, being in your house, like, yeah. like sitting there. And I work from home and I'm alone by myself. <laughs> no unsupervised chads. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, November? Yeah, like November, it, it was, I could barely function. It was, it was that bad. Like, and you, the self-hate gets, gets real bad, too. So now you're like miserable and scared and anxious miserable and scared, hating yourself anxious, for all of it. Constantly thinking, of just, I, I hate, I hate being this way. I hate being this way. Yeah. No. And then constantly putting myself in the thoughts instead of the other thoughts. So hating myself, thinking about hurting myself instead of other people. It's stuck in a terrible loop. It's exhausting. Yeah. It sounds really exhausting. And it sounds scary and it sounds uncomfortable. But like it sounds like you're you're figuring it out, you know? I have a I have a tool like he called it a toolbox. I have a toolbox for it now. I just have yeah. to, to use it. Well yeah, dude. I mean it's this is this is all like just regular therapy stuff that works for everybody and it's like it's cool to see that not cool, but you know, cool to see the similarities and like yeah. You're not f***ed up. You're, just, you're the same as everybody else. It's all the same shit. It's just a different balance of, you know, this level of this rather than mm -hmm. this level of this. Like, dude, I hate myself for all the anger that I have, like unprovoked anger. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why? 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 Just shut <laughs> up. Stop. And it's like, f***, it makes no sense to me. And, you know, at some point in time, I just had to be like, look, you're not acting on it, dude. You're not a bad guy. This just gets in your head, just f don't act on it, move on, be nice, have a nice day. Uh, something my therapist said stuff with me too, he goes, do you know how I know that you're not going to do this and you're not a bad person, how you're not going to do the things that you're thinking of, because you sought help for the thoughts you're that you're here. having. You, you, they made you so uncomfortable that you, you reached out to somebody and got help for it. But somebody that's going to do it is going to think about it, and take pleasure in the thought. Be like, oh yeah, nobody yeah. knows what I'm about to do. Yeah. yeah. He goes, but it's, it's disturbing to you and you, you don't want to yeah. be this way. That's how I always felt about being a parent. If you care enough to worry about being a good parent, that means you're already, yeah. you're already on the road. You know, like if you're trying something, you're already on the road, dude. And that's like, that's heavy shit, man. Because like, therapy is a really f***ing loaded term. God, it's such a sh word. You know, f***ing... Because so many people are scared of it. Like, personally, I was scared of therapy for a while, dude. Because like, there's a huge stigma in, in the United States with mental health. Huge. And it's like, as we're, as we're discussing, we're all pretty f mentally yeah. unwell. You know what I'm saying? So, like, why is it such a big f***ing deal? It's said, I think it's the shame. The shame and the guilt. And, and, and you OCD, know, let's is, hide it. OCD is really misrepresented in the media. And TV shows and Hollywood, mm -hmm. like you have guys like like Sheldon, not right? Time, not and it's, everybody laughs at it that he does it, but, but in like, reality, it's not really funny. <laughs> no, it's like if, if that was me, the reason I'm knocking three times is because I'm trying to get rid of my my thought. But at the same time, you know, like you gotta laugh at yourself. I've heard Lieutenant Dan more times since I lost my leg than not. Yeah, and it's kind of that thing. It's like I get it. It's funny, ha <laughs> ha. But guess what? Like, to a deep level, it kind of hurts, and it's mm -hmm. kind of annoying sometimes, because, like, yeah, I know I lost my leg. Yeah, I know I f***ing just knocked three times. I'm trying to do it secretly so you don't call me out, because it's really uncomfortable. Like, yeah. you know, it's just funny how, like, we learn how to normalize things that bother us. Just anyone does. Right. But that, I think that's good adaptation techniques in being mm -hmm. a good human. You know? Like, <laughs> yeah. After I became an OCD advocate and I started... You know, trying to promote awareness of OCD and how mm -hmm. it affects people. I started looking for OCD shirts, like something to OCD awareness kind of thing. The one that you wear. The one that I wear. OCD is, OCD is not an adjective. Absolutely. Like, I'm so OCD. No, you're not. Dog, I got. I can feel you right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Re- okay. But yeah. I, was, I was looking for shirts, and I kept finding shirts like OCD, obsessive camping disorder, OCD, obsessive coffee disorder. Like, oh, so it's just funny and cute to yeah, everyone. You're making something funny and a cute little joke of something that makes me want to hate myself. Wow. It makes me want to, you know, hate my life and not want to be this way, but you're making a joke of it. Holy I never even thought of that. Like, yeah. that's heavy. So now, when you found the OCD is not an adjective, or did you make it? It's it's a hashtag. It's it's one of the awareness hashtags that we use. Okay, but it, did you find the shirt or make the shirt? I made the shirt. I had a buddy of mine print it out for me. New business idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, dude, because like, I'm not really cool with you making fun of my amputation and wearing yeah. shirts about it you know like yeah it'll be funny i can giggle at it but that kind of hurts so dude yeah. wow like i was i was at the flea market with that shirt one day and a lady stopped and she's like oh you know i love your shirt ha ha why are you, why laughing? Why are you, why are you laughing, laughing about it then? it's not a joke man but yeah so so i think that's the thing and that's that's i'm assuming why you became an advocate because it's very misunderstood as to what the f- OCD even is. Mm-hmm. Dude. And my, my therapist was telling me that it's they found things to to believe that it's hereditary, which makes sense. Okay. My mom's OCD, my sister's OCD, my dad has a little bit of it, my brother has OCD, and I, I can see it in Cora now already. Yeah. But now at least I know how to approach it with her, because I have my toolkit I can give her. Pass yeah. it on. Granted, every therapy doesn't work for everybody else. But I mean, it's a start. Eventually, I might. I'll, I'll probably I'll have to take her to a therapist to get her own toolkit. But yeah. Like we were in karate one day, and she goes to the bathroom, and the soap's out, and she has a breakdown because there's no soap. And just you know, rinse your hands off. We'll get soap. We'll sanitize it later. Here's some sanitizer. But there's no soap. There's no soap. There's no soap. I had, I had to talk her out of the bathroom because yeah. there's no soap. Holy cow, man. Yeah, so like as a parent, you're sitting there watching this like, no. I can't help you, kid, but I can help you. Like, like I know what you're going through, and I know nothing I say is going to make it any better. Yep, yeah, there's, there's only so much I can do. I love you. Let's fix this if we can. Man. So you're going to have to sit with the thought of not having soap to make it better. Um, how old is she? She's five. So to explain that to her is a... Uh, not really easy to get through her little brain right now. Yeah. And she already has her irrational fears. I, I, I can see them growing, but not growing so much, but I can see them Beginning, as they are yeah. developing and everything. What are some of the things that she's afraid of? <laughs> Back in Virginia, this is it's kind of gone away now. She was afraid that her toys were going to talk to her. <laughs> like she, I, I feel bad. Like, yeah. it's cute, but like, that's, that's got to be a terrible fear. You're looking at your toys like, please don't talk to me when I'm like, sleeping. Uh, I'd be sitting in the ba- I'd be sitting in the bathroom, she'd come running, like crying. What if my toy talks to me? No, it's not going to. You're fine. I can't, like, how are you going to sit there and tell her, the, the way to stop that, honey, is to think about your toy talking to you and feel scared about it until it goes away. <laughs> <laughs> Win! <laughs> Whew. Yeah, it's an interesting, interesting ball of toys to play with there. She's that's that's gone away. She hasn't worried about that in a while. Man, well that's it's kind of good to see it like come and go like you know yours does. You yeah. know, all right. Well, she's scared now, but it'll be it'll be all right. And my OCD drifts in and out of the different subsets of OCD. Really? Uh, my health OCD too. I. I I dip it into like mental health OCD. Like in Virginia, where when I was going through it, it was any kind of anxiety that I had would snowball into a different tangent of loop. Like I was at, I was outside grilling one day, and it was raining, and we had the garbage cans in a way where like the rain would hit the bag. We didn't have a, a lid on it because it broke, and a drop hit the bag, and then my brain registered is like, what if you heard a voice and not the bag? So in my head, it just starts a whole new loop. What if you're hearing voices? What if you hear a voice? What if you hear a voice? Oh. And I'm not, but in my head, I'm like, what if, you, is... what if you do hear it? And you get stuck in that loop of what if you hear it? 
And I noticed you said that about Cora, what if my toys? Yeah. Like, fuck, man. You get the constant loop of what if. OCD is, they, they call it the doubter's disease because you doubt yourself. You're constantly wondering what if. I mean, that eventually went away. That's wild, dude. And so, like, do you have any driving anxieties and stuff like that? Driving, not so much. Driving, I'm all right with it. So the reason why I asked that is when I was younger, I used to panic heavy about getting into a car wreck and, like, getting rear-ended. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, you can't control everybody else. And I'd, like, constantly be looking in my rear-view mirror and and after a while, like, I did a lot of fucking meditating about it. Like, I would, I would, like, meditate, like, you know, uh, like, anti-danger, not anti-danger, but, like, safety type stuff. Like, I'm safe, I'm peaceful, I'm okay, you know, I'm like, fuck, man. Like, <laughs> that was hard shit. That was real hard Because, you know, it's happening while you're driving, and you're like, ah, ah, ah. So you're just constantly <laughs> on this loop of what if this? What if this? What if this? So yeah, glad I grew out of that. Shit. Um, maybe I do have OCD. Either that or like we're just too similar. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you may have like a mild OCD. Cause like I do get things that I'm like, why is this like this? But I, I wouldn't like classify myself as yeah. I am really imbalanced chemically. I think, I think I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm probably imbalanced, <laughs> but I kind of like it. <laughs> like people, like I had a buddy ask me, "Well, how do I know if I'm OCD? Well, is it affecting your life?" Said, not really. Said, well, you might be, but I mean, if it's not affecting your life, don't worry about so it. So then, don't try and don't try and create a problem that yeah. isn't there. Yeah, because I mean, everybody probably does that too in this conversation. You know, like, hey, am I OCD? Mm. <laughs> well, if, if it's not affecting your life in a negative right. way, I mean, don't. Right. About it. And I say that as an OCD person who worries about everything. Like today, there was a group. There was a group post on one of the groups that I follow. Um, religious OCD is one of the subsets. Somebody had posted saying like, um, "I keep seeing the number six 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 pop up on my Facebook and on my YouTube." And he posted examples. It's like this. This post had six hundred sixty six so, likes. This so now he feels like he, he's a bad person because six 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 pops he, up. In the in the thing, he was like, um, "What could this be? Could this be? Do you think somebody hacked my my Facebook, or my accounts to make me see this?" I, I commented, "I'm like, it's completely coincidental that you're seeing it at that particular point in its in its post history." I go, "It's it's completely coincidental. Try not to worry about that." And I say that, knowing that that's He's much easier. Worry, yeah. It's much easier said than done, but. I don't think anybody hacked your account, so I think you just right. happened to see it when it was at that point in its post history. Well, yeah, like in the OCD group that you put me in, like, when I speak, I'm like, man, I hope I'm not being insensitive, but like, you know, hey, just simply acknowledge, you know, what's going yeah. on here, you know, and it's, and it's hard because you don't know these people and you're not talking, or you might know some of them, but like, you're not talking face to face, you know blanket group you know like it's, it's you, a, you can't read tone of voice over text right exactly and so like i'm like oh god i don't want to be that guy that's like oh suck it up buttercup yeah. <laughs> so like reading reading text it, it's hard to do like group therapy over text because i have friends that i'll text and i'll be like if, if i didn't know him and know how he was typing i would think he was a but I, I know him and I know what he's thinking and his tone of voice that he's typing it in. So I mean, I'm not worried about it, but... You group, know, like group therapy over text is hard. It's definitely hard. But I mean, it, it's also helpful. Like, any, sort, any form of therapy is helpful. Any type of therapy where people are going to show up and, like, try to hash out their sh Like, I always believe that's helpful. Anyone that shows up to that, anyone that's trying kudos to them because like I said dude it's hard just to say I'm going to a therapist I'm almost 40 and it took me this long to be able to like mm -hmm. say stuff like that without feeling stupid you know like oh I, I go to a therapist or I have a life coach you know or, like I seek help 
you know, I read self-help books. Like, there's something so negative against all these things when it's really just, I'm just trying to be my best self, guys, you know? I don't know where that stigma came from, but it's definitely a thing that we see too much of. So we're going to wrap up this podcast for the day. Go ahead and give your hand a little show. That's where we are now. Oh, yeah, we got pictures. And yeah, we'll get better later. pictures on there. So, yeah, we're wrapping up the podcast for the day. Still got more tattooing to do. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I am Roger Rapole. My studio is Radding, Florida. Go to RaddingFlorida.com, at Radding, Florida on uh, the social medias. Uh, and my personal is Roger Rapole. And then my YouTube is The Rad Movement. Um, and yeah, so if you need high quality tattoos or motivation, come check us out. If you need paranormal investigation, check us out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, thanks so much. Appreciate y'all for watching. Thanks for uh, listening to our OCD stuff and you know life stuff and paranormal stuff and tattoo stuff. and uh, You know, thanks for tuning in. See you guys later. As a side note on the end, if you are someone who's suffering from OCD and have don't know where to go or check out the International OCD Foundation's website, iocdf.com. Cool. And at the Rad Movement is uh, another motivational thing I do, at the underscore Rad underscore Movement. So uh, yeah, at any level of just minor motivation or straight up hardcore OCDs, uh, we've got resources to help you guys out. Thank you so much. We're Rad and so are you. Have a great fucking day.